here we are. It's a uh, it's a Tuesday, um, and on Saturday I ran my first ever marathon. So uh, pretty chuffed at, at doing that, and um, I thought it'd be quite cool to run through it. Um, how I chose to do a marathon, um, what type I did, um, the lead up, the training, uh, how the run went, um, and uh, yeah, if there's anything else I'd kind of uh, change about it. So uh, here we go. So I graduated uh, Couch to 5K exactly three years ago. Um, hadn't been a runner, um, didn't really like it, um, but yeah, really, really proud to have kind of completed that and and got to that kind of been able to run 5k um, I kind of worked my way up um, and a year after that I did my my first half marathon um, I did the London landmarks really really great um, running around London um, seeing the sights those people cheering and shouting um, and a really really great experience and I remember crossing the line on that and going F me if I'm ever gonna do that again. So I wasn't even thinking about a marathon. And then lo and behold, I kind of decided, hey, that'd be quite fun. Um, so Q going to April, March, April time of last year. So March, April, 2020, um, was all prepped to do a marathon. Um, I was gonna do Brighton Marathon, which was gonna be in the April. I did my 20 mile race um, prep race in the March and then Covid struck, lockdown struck um, and all of that was gone so I um, kind of had to put it on the back burner obviously we're in lockdown um, and you know there's bigger things going on in the world so missed out on that last year and uh, the marathon kept getting rescheduled obviously no one really knew what was going on um, and then that meant we kept getting moved around. Was it gonna be in the following October? Was it gonna be in the April? And no one really knew. So what me and my, my friend Ellie decided to do was prep to do a marathon by ourselves. Just the two of us, no crowds, no, uh, you know, entry times or specific dates. We just thought, let's go and do this. Um, we set a time that we can do it. There's just two of us, um, and based on all the kind of lockdown rules that had been going on, that would be fine. So we set a time for that, March 2021, and um, had a bit of an idea about what we'd be doing for the run, uh, but it just meant starting training around uh, Christmas, New Year time, and working up. As I said, I'm kind of happy doing up to halves, um, not too, no, not too difficult. I shouldn't really say not too difficult. Every all running's a little bit hard, um, but I've got an okay mindset for it. So I did that. Um, did all the training. Um, found actually, I was a lot, on, a lot more, a lot more unfit. Doesn't sound right, but I hope you get the drift. Uh, I didn't have the same fitness as I did the previous year. Um, put a bit of lockdown weight on. Um, probably you know mental well-being and all those kind of things weren't as good um, but ploughed on through and got to do my 18 mile run before uh, three weeks before this proposed new marathon date um, that was fine really really tough work um, and then uh, and then it came to doing the taper and uh, so this is three weeks beforehand. Um, I rolled my ankle um, really badly. Well, it felt like really badly because I've done it quite a few times before. And um, it hurt and I was like, am I gonna be able to do this race? Um, obviously we were able to move the times if we needed to, but uh, hey, I'd already got the medals made. Uh, and they said March 2021 on it. So I thought we'd better stick to it. So gave myself a week's rest. Um, bought some uh, special ankle supports to wear and luckily um, a week before the um, marathon date 
I was able to go on a on a 10k run um, and you know what I felt really good um, ankle felt a lot stronger there was some stability there um, which hasn't always been the issue when I've rolled my ankle um, and uh, yeah it felt good and it really really helped me realize why why we do a taper when we uh, when, when you're doing marathon training so I got up to that 18 miles and you know what I was knackered every week it was just moving up you know whether that was do a half and then it was move up to you know 15 miles and 16 miles then this 18 miles and uh, my body was like ah, you're you're really really tired from this um, but having that kind of couple of weeks rest um, off the ankle um, which would have been tapering time anyway of kind of gradually decreasing the amount of mileage um, I realized that hey you know having a little bit of rest isn't too bad so it wasn't the worst thing that could have happened um, and I'd say that's why it's really really good to to do a taper when you're running and gradually work down that mileage and it means your muscles have time to have time to repair and time to kind of uh, yeah just um, work better so I'm really uh, quite happy with with how a taper had worked because I hadn't had the chance to do that last time when uh, when the when the marathon had been cancelled the previous March. Um, so yeah, worked out great. So I think my training had gone okay actually, um, based on how I felt um, on that run the week before my marathon. Um, I didn't really have too complicated a training plan. Um, it was basically about those long Sunday runs, um, getting mileage in the legs, um, trying to do runs in the week. I tried to do some speed work and hills and those kind of things, um, but sometimes it was just doing recovery over it. Um, it's all about getting miles in the legs um, and knowing that you're able to keep running even when you're, uh, when you're tired. Um, so yeah, so the training training went really well. Um, I was happy with it, even if I did feel a bit over the weight, um, tired, um, lethargic, and all those kind of things. But um, but that uh, that ten k run the week the week before the marathon really uh, really did me well. Um, I probably went a bit faster than I uh, than I meant to, um, but wow, I was kind of like. My legs, they, they feel so much better after having that rest. Um, and it did wonders for, for just my uh, positivity, for thinking, for thinking, yeah, I can do this race um, and I'm gonna be able to finish it. So then it came to uh, that week before the race. Um, made sure I was eating carbs. The other thing about that taper period is you're not running as much, so your muscles are in much better condition to take on the carbs and the glycogen that you get from those carbs um, and just kind of store it a lot more um, which is a funny way to think about it so don't just think about carb loading the day before think about putting uh, yeah all that energy into your muscles so it's tempting in that uh, final run up to the marathon to kind of try and squeeze in some uh, some training runs um, but you're not going to lose fitness um, I say I didn't run for a couple of weeks after my longest run but um, probably the best way to think about it is think of that final uh, big run you do the 18 miles or 20 miles or whatever it is now imagine how good you'd be if you'd had a few weeks rest in those legs and then uh, and then you go out and do it and that's basically what the marathon is you don't want to kind of do your marathon when you're tired you want to do your marathon when you're when you're fresh um, relaxed and your muscles are working at 100 percent not that continually fatigued um, feeling that they do they do get through that um, training period where you're just up in your mileage constantly so let's uh, let's get on to race day um, I had all my kit prepared um, I'd worked out um, the route um, with Ellie um, and luckily we were able to have Ellie's sister um, meet us along the way on her bike just to kind of check in and um, carry anything that we needed um, and then just yeah frequently just pop in and out um, are you okay do you need anything 
um, and keep us going along because uh, you know this was just a marathon um, on our own a solo one no crowds um, no aid stations no uh, you know official start line finish line um, it was just two friends who'd mapped out a route and uh, what we decided on we were going to start in one place um, head out halfway um, turn around once we've done the half marathon and then uh, yeah get back start finishing the same place um, all kind of keeps within those kind of guidelines of just being safe um, and not kind of like venturing too far or putting yourself into any uh, any issues so we had that um, I'd worked out my fueling how many gels I needed pack some uh, jelly babies um, put some leukosades in Bex's uh, bag that was Ellie's sister um, in her bike bag so I had a few few things and then also had a bag that I left in the car which had my post race stuff you know clean t-shirt jumper um, bit of food some drinks uh, all important Pepsi Max there's a little treat for me as well um, and um, and that was it really um, had my ankle support on to try and make sure that I didn't roll it um, and that was it really oh, we also had bladder packs on as well on our back so that we we're able to constantly be drinking you know to have have water so these are all things that would be different from a you know an official race an official race I wouldn't have to carry my own drinks and water um, I could rely on knowing that there'd be aid stations at certain you know every five kilometers or something there'd be toilets um, in, in certain places there'd be official yeah start times and there'd definitely be crowds which um, which would be amazing but hey we uh we wanted to take it off after Brighton was cancelled and rescheduled so many times um, just wanted to get it done which sounds quite uh, quite weird I just want to run uh, 26.2 miles um, and tick it off but it was kind of like a case of, of finally getting the chance to to tick that off of our list so I'm gonna have a little chat about about the actual race um, so we'd mapped out a full marathon um, 26.2 miles um, 42.2 kilometers and we're going to be starting in Faversham and running along the along the coast through Whitstable um, reaching Herne Bay all, all along the Kent coast and then basically once our kind of uh, Garmin watches uh, hit that kind of 13.1 miles then we just whizz, whizz back around and uh, and repeat the journey um, so it's quite a nice coastal route um, to go along um, and uh, yeah it was it was a really really nice first half actually um, of the race chugging along um, you've got things to talk about you uh, you're happy um, and you basically I kind of had that mental thing of reaching 13.1 miles and then knowing I could turn around and I'd be on the countdown and uh, I'm not sure if I'd do that next time. Um, I guess because it was a turning around point, it was very, very specific. And uh, I think once I hit that 13.1, I was kind of like, oh man, I've got to do it all again. Um, so one of my tips would be to not kind of set that halfway mark. Um, maybe think about it, yeah, slightly differently. Um, Cause I kind of had a countdown to halfway and then it was another countdown to the end. So quite a, quite a tough thing to do. But I'd done that um, that first half and it was really nice, uh, making great time and kind of thinking, wow, if we if we keep doing this, um, run for a, yeah a nice a nice finish time. Um, I'd had a bit of a, a bit of a niggle with my uh, with this anclad roll. I'd had um, a new type of strap that I'd got for it, um, a Aircast A60. Um, it's called. It's basically kind of got splints on it. Um, but they'd just been kind of rubbing weirdly on my on my ankle for a lot of the time. So I've been thinking about that constantly. Um, and uh, in the end of that halfway point, um, we stopped for a little bit. I uh, took the took that ankle thing off um, and tried running for a little bit without it. Um, but it just didn't feel right, my ankle. Um, luckily, I had 
um, put another uh, kind of more simplistic ankle support in, in the, the bicycle bag that um, that Bex had and I was able to put that on a little while later once she kind of caught up with us um, and then that was okay but I guess, I guess kind of the lesson from that is if there's something that's niggling you're gonna uh, you're gonna you're gonna realize it I've heard of people that have had their socks on like a little fold in their socks uh, and that's created a blister um, or something's rubbing incorrectly um, so try and get all that prep out of the way on your training ones know what equipment you're gonna be wearing um, I didn't really want to have to be wearing an ankle support but obviously that close to um, the, the marathon um, I didn't really have chance to do more runs and things with it so just uh, do some do some runs realize areas that chafe um, a little tip if you get a you can get nipple rub if you're getting quite hot and uh, it's for the guys and you're running a lot and you, your kind of synthetic tops are, are going up and down and um, what I do is I get a little bit of KT tape uh, like kinesiology tape put a little bit on each nip sorted that's fine uh, other people get um, you know Vaseline um, and those kind of things but find out what works well um, practice in the clothing that you're going to wear and obviously the shoes that you're going to wear and the socks so make sure you've got all that because otherwise you're going to uh, you're going to regret it a little bit later on um, but luckily I had all that kind of prepped I knew that might happen so I just uh, yeah changed it all um, and uh, yeah put a new a new ankle support on um, that really annoyed me as well <laughs> and later on um, when we got to the last 5k I think I just took the ankle support off I was like if my ankle goes now I could just walk but I'm so annoyed um, with the ankle so where were we done half of it had a little break not really too worried this is the other thing about it being a uh, you know a marathon without crowds um, I wasn't really worried about what the finish time would be um, I think if there was an official start to gun an official finish time then uh, and rankings then I might have been worried or I would have certainly kind of kept moving a lot more um, I wouldn't have had little breaks I wouldn't have kind of had to worry but the fact is that was always going to happen we were running through um you know uh seaside um there's going to be people on paths so we have to move over um and uh just yeah it's a different route um completely non-like an actual an actual race i've said about us carrying our backpacks as well so again that's going to add a little bit of a little bit of time onto your onto your runs as well so don't uh i wasn't really worried too much about the time there was a, 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 a time that I, I kind of mentally thought hey that'd be nice there's an idle time there's a kind of worst case time and actually I think I was past the worst case time um, for our finish but do you know what don't care did a marathon sorted um, and I can worry about that worry about that another time so we've done the halfway point we're going around and it's still fine I um, knew it was going to be a little bit tough but hey I know I've done uh, we did an 18 mile training run in the lead up I'd also done 20 miles the previous year so I knew what it was like um, to to do those and and that was fine um, and we also had some some friends that had kind of like popped up along the route to wave um, which was really nice so if you can share your 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 location um, share like a live map from from whatsapp um, or something like that then um, you can uh they can track you and just be there to kind of wave um, and that was really really nice but um on that return we got quite a lot of headwind from being on a coastal one um it definitely wasn't that helpful on the way out it didn't feel like we were getting pushed along um so the it definitely picked up the um the wind had and oh, that was something else that i was able to kind of focus on uh <laughs> negatively and um i kept going on about the wind and i just heard myself moaning about it and going oh that wind that wind's not very nice and uh probably annoying ellie who who i was running with uh, <laughs> uh a little bit but again you kind of get fixated on those little things um anything kind of like push you along but yeah they do they do aggravate you um as you're as you're moving uh while i'm recording this you may realize i'm kind of walking up and down the same hill but hey it's nice um and uh yeah get a little bit of a get a little bit of a walk in so 20 miles only 10 kilometers left hey that sounds like the home run 
ah, oh, it was the hardest. That that last bit, you'd be running, and I think, oh wow, have I done a have I done that kilometre yet? And it'd be you know, a hundred metres. Um, it really really eats into you. Um, so I found mile twenty to twenty four really really tough. Um, I'd walk, and then I'd kind of have to mentally psych myself to 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 run. I go, okay, come on, all right, let's do it, let's do it. Let's kind of run a little bit, and um, yeah, that was that was hard going. Um, but it wasn't it wasn't like I'd hit the wall or anything. Um, I think my fueling had been fine. I'd been taking the um, SIS gels every 45 minutes, um, which was great. Um, I'd spaced them out a little bit because I'd had some Lucasade as well. Um, Lucasade made a real big change as well, um, just because you're gonna, you know, you get a nice kind of sugary hit from it, um, and you get a different kind of type of energy, but. I had it in the legs. It wasn't like I couldn't run anymore. It was just, I didn't really feel like it. Um, look, I'm turning around, gonna go back up the hill. Um, so there was there was definitely still energy in there and it wasn't like I couldn't move my legs. I was able to keep walking. It was just that mental motivation to, to run. So I'd have to psych myself up and say, okay, come on, let's try and run until that building or you know that car or, or anything just kind of up it um, and I would look at my watch and I'd see kind of time ticking away a little bit but as soon as I started running then that kind of predicted finish time would would jump back down again um, on the watch so those were hard um, again had some friends pop up which was really really great because I didn't expect it um, like little surprise visits um, just to keep me pushing along so I'd keep doing this little run and have a little bit of a walk, a bit of a run, have a bit of a walk. Um, and then it got to the last last couple of miles. And then I kind of was like, okay, I started to actually up my running a little bit. Um, there was a few more kind of downhill sections, which was great. Um, returning back to the start, which we'd obviously be done uphill on the way out. And uh, yeah, had that bit of energy. Still had to kind of stop every so often, but it was just, yeah, a little bit and then a lot more running. Um, and then it was a countdown to that to that finish, that finish line, and ah, oh, I was happy. I was happy to to uh, to get to our kind of end line and the uh, and the watch to beep. But um, Ellie's GPS was slightly off at one point, so I think try and make it up so that hers reached the 42.2 kilometres. We actually did about 300 metres more. Just hit it off because obviously, if you're in on Strava. Um, it didn't count, so we have to make it count. Um, so I think in the end it was 42 and a half um, kilometres. And those 300 metres, oh, you definitely feel it. So finished, laid on the floor, took my painful shoes off, um, and uh, yeah, chunked back some uh, some more Lucasade. Um, and I'd done it, and we'd even. Uh, prepared some medals for ourselves. Um, so I'd ordered those off of Etsy. Um, so nice wooden med med medals um, that were, yeah, all personalized. And uh, yeah, it's nice to have that kind of uh, something to remember it by. So even while it wasn't a official race, it, um, I still got something to, to mark it, put on my uh, medal wall and uh, yeah, look back. And uh, so whilst I was a bit, a bit achy afterwards, um, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I was effing and jeffing uh, part of the way um, when we were getting near the end. As I say, that kind of that last 10k, I probably doubted myself a little bit, but I always knew I could keep walking. Um, it was just a running that I found hard. But my fueling was fine, um, so I knew I could. Worst case scenario, I just walk the end. I just walk it. I was sort of saying that to myself, um, but obviously, I didn't want to. I wanted to have a run, um, and that was that. So, marathon sorted. I did it. Um, I'm really happy. So, how do I feel after finishing a marathon? Um, obviously. You can say the physical side of things, you know, a few aches and pains. Um, but I think the, 
the thing that I'm happy about is that I've shown I was able to do a marathon even though I wasn't in the best physical shape um, obviously I've got the ankle and I couldn't use that as a bit of a bit of an excuse and certain like little niggles along the way but I also know I'm not in the not in the best of shape you know a little bit more overweight uh, I'm 40 now as well um, nudging 16 stone probably which is probably about a stone and a half heavier than my kind of lighter kind of uh, weight bracket I have been um, but yeah I think it shows that if you put your mind to it almost anyone can can do it so it's not it's not this kind of like unachievable thing I remember when I first started running when I did that caps 5k um, through work they did surveys you know what is your what is your aim what could you do um, and I was like oh I might be able to do a half marathon maybe um, and I did that and um, and then I was like, well, that's it. I don't, I can't really see the point in doing a marathon because it's it's a really long way, and it is a long way, but um, uh, it's it's achievable. So I'd say is don't don't set yourself, you know, a time target or anything like that. It's just doing it, and you can, you know, it's still even if you you know you walked it, you've still done a marathon, and um, you've still completed that that distance. Um, and obviously it's nice to kind of do your best but I think it just shows that that you can yeah you can still push through so the thing I got out of it was knowing that I was able to do it even though I wasn't in the best shape and that kind of goes into my next kind of thing of will I do another marathon and I think I probably will uh, maybe not for another year but I'd like to think that next time I can uh, try and avoid the injuries I can get myself in a bit of a physical uh, better physical shape um, guaranteed if I if I you know if I knock a stone off my weight that's a stone less that I'm going to be carrying around um, and that's gonna that's gonna help improve that time as well so yeah we will I'll do it again uh, probably <laughs> but um, yeah it'd be nice to do it at a, a proper race um, where there's crowds and support um, and I really get something from it um, I don't know when that's gonna be um, obviously we're still in this uh, funny world and safety has to come first but that'll be something that'll be quite interesting to do. So watch your space. So that's my marathon chat experience of running, uh, doing a marathon without any crowds. Um, it's, it's a tough one because uh, you definitely do get pushed along by those, by those crowds that cheering. Uh, it sounds weird. I wouldn't have walked or stopped as much um, if there'd been people there. Um, it's just cause, cause I could. Um, and uh, I think maybe that was quite nice for that first experience. Um, I was able to do it at my own pace, um, be pretty chilled um, and not have to worry about, about start times or getting home or, or any of those kind of things. Um, so it's definitely a good experience um, and it's nice to take it off knowing that, that I could do that again um, and yeah, have some fun. So what next for me? Um, I think I'm probably gonna start looking at some shorter distances again um you know 10ks um and uh, and things like that and maybe some halves um because it really does eat it out that that training that you're doing and um, when you go out oh, i'm just going to go out for a you know a three hour run um that eats up a lot of time um from your you know from your weekends um and can kind of those midweek sessions can just be a bit tiring so probably just yeah have a little bit more fun do those kind of more uh, speedier things and um, try and lose a bit of weight um, and that's the other thing we're, we're getting into summer look at this glorious weather um, and we're only uh, just nudging into April now um, so yeah I'm gonna enjoy that enjoy that sunshine go out and try not burn too much but if you've got any questions um, about marathons about someone who is 40 years old uh, overweight only started running a few years ago um, and didn't think they could run then uh, you can ask me some questions <laughs> um, just um, yeah put a, put a comment below um, and obviously yeah if you've enjoyed the video then you know you can like and subscribe and do all that kind of YouTuber -y kind of stuff um, but I just yeah just being honest um, that's that's what it is uh, I constantly learning as well um, but yeah, any questions, um, just feel free to ask. And um, yeah, let us know how your runner's getting on. Cheers.